Hello everyone, I am Matthew Thomas, you're watching Super Cool Radio, I am here at The Forge in Joliet, first time here to impress at The Forge, I have an incredible guest joining me at this time, currently Drowning Pool is on a co-headline tour with Saliva, please welcome the lead vocalist of Drowning Pool, Ryan McCombs. Hello, thank you for having me. It's incredible to have you on the podcast, thank you so much. And, you know, my first time seeing Drowning Pool and I'm interviewing you, it's going to be a great day. Cool. Uh, I hope so. We don't disappoint. We, this tour has been a fun one, man. It's, it's uh, every night. The crowds have been awesome. So it's been, uh, I, I think, I, I feel pretty safe you have a good time. I hope you do. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to it. So I'm, I'm curious for you, this is a, the first uh, full-length tour since you rejoined uh, yes. Drowning Pool. So how was it? It was like. Did you have to get back into the rhythm, or did you just kind of just jump back into it? We just jumped right back into it. We, we had so little time to to think about, think it. about it, really. Yeah, absolutely, because uh, when we had the conversation about getting back together, there was shows like two weeks later already booked um, that they had, had booked before, you know, anything, and before conversation we took place. So it was more like... Do you want do you want to get back together? And if so, we need to get together and and, and do this real quick. So uh, I flew in uh, a few days before the first show, and we rehearsed a couple of days and went and knocked it out. It's it was kind of weird, man. It was you know it was kind of like wearing a, uh, an old comfy pair of shoes. I think we all just we all just slid right back into it. It was good. Well, I'm glad to hear that it was very you know, uh, easy just to jump right back into it. And uh, so, like for you, um, what have been like some of the highlights from the store? I think it's it's nice that you just don't. It's been such a great turnout that well, in touring, especially in this day and age, and at at this level, um, it's kind of like Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays are your prime days, and Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays can sometimes be thin. Um, and it, there's just not thin shows on this tour and that's cool to see. Um, I mean, we had this past Sunday in Fort Wayne was off the hook and then the following day, Monday, the district in, uh, Detroit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saving my rear there in Detroit again, it, this a Sunday and a Monday night. It, it was like, it was great. You, there was, it felt like. Friday, Saturday night shows, and it was it was a friggin' Sunday from Monday. This tour has been full of that, though. It's been awesome. Well, it's great that you guys get like the the turnout and the response, and like having a killer show on a Monday. I mean, that's almost unheard of sometimes. You it, know, it is, and uh, I think it's just it's due to this package. You look at uh, there isn't a weak point. You know, the band has a history of we've done the band Riding Pool has done numerous shows with Adelaide is away, and they're a great band. And it's saliva, yeah, I mean, it's saliva, you know. It's, um, and yeah, then, really, really, no explanation needed right. for saliva. And and then uh, this is my first time sharing the road with any given sin, and I'm blown away by those guys. And I mean, they've got a they've got a hell of a buzz going for them. Right? I, I say buzz, that seems like a too little of a word. They got a hell of a thing going for them right now, and there's a reason why. It's because they're damn good. And so it's it, there's not a there's not a lull in the show. It's just a good night of of, of music. Like all four bands, you know, I've, I've seen Adelita's Way before. Uh, you know, I have not seen Saliva yet, but again, I've heard a lot of people, you know, who've interviewed and who I've talked to say they always bring a killer show. I've heard a lot of great things about you guys and Any Given Sin. I'm excited for tonight because, again, it's a killer package of just nonstop, just all, all four bands are bangers. It's going to be a good show. It has been. It's been cool. It's been, I think, from the, the moment the music starts to the, to the last you know us and saliva have been interchanging we we flip-flop nights of of who who closes each night and it's funny because nobody wants to go on after the other like nobody you gotta top <laughs> like, them yeah like saliva and us are both like our favorite slots are the direct support slot the slot right <laughs> right before the the last band um so it's like it that's kind of the coveted spot so you look at them and be like oh we gotta close tonight wait and it's funny because you know when you're when you're a young band coming up through the ranks you dream about being the headliner. And all of a sudden, you know, we, 
Drowning Pool has been a headliner for a couple of decades now. But you're in a situation like this where you're with a band that brings it every night like Saliva. You don't want to go on after that. <laughs> and they're, they're the same way. They don't want to go on after it. So it's funny. We, we laugh about it and have a good time. But it, it is the truth at the same time. So uh, do you know who's headlining tonight at the Forge? We are. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you got to follow yeah. Saliva. Yeah. Yeah. We're, with, we are, we're doing this one out of the grace of our heart because they were supposed to headline tonight. But uh, they have a bunch of business people in town here that, that have to have to bug out at a certain time. So okay. they, it wasn't going to work for them to headline. So we, we told them we made a deal, though. We, we, cause What's like the deal? Like I said, the, 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 head, the, the direct support slot, right? You know, it, there is no direct support because it's a co-headline tour. But the, the, the first of the, of the co-headline slot is kind of like that preferred one. So we told him, you know, we'll, we'll do this. We'll, we'll, but we want that like that WWE money in the bank thing. We want, we want to be able to. Oh, cash it in. We said, we said it, it's going to, we're going to cash it in eventually and we're going to get the same favor. But the key is, is that we, we get to have that and play that card at any point that we want at any point in the day too. So like even if you're just getting ready to step on stage, boom, nope, we're on. So yeah. <laughs> so who, who's carrying the briefcase for uh, <laughs> right, right. you guys? We're just messing with it. But <laughs> it, yeah, it's a. Uh, both bands just, yeah, so we're just having fun. There's a lot of fun out here, fine. Oh, you know, it definitely sounds like, and I know when I talked to CJ for my interview, he was super excited uh, for this tour. But so I'm curious for like you. I know I asked CJ what his favorite song is to perform live, so I'm curious for you. Do you have a favorite Drowning Pool song to perform live? Right now, I think it's Mute. Oh, nice, nice. Um, it's a song that I think people just don't expect to hear. The band hasn't played it uh, since Dave was in, you know, they, Dave was still with us. So it was when I brought it up. Because when, when we came back in, like I said, we only had a couple of weeks before the first show. So we, we went to, but we didn't have any choice really, but to rely as much, kind of fall back on muscle memory as much as possible. Meaning that we kind of went back to the, sh the songs that I sang with the band meaning my era as well as the songs that we sang of Dave's era that I sang with the band. Um, and then hopefully here as time progresses, we'll start adding in some of Jason's era and stuff like that. But um, so the set was, uh, the set is predominantly the stuff that I did in the past, but we never did mute. But so when we, we started jamming again, I lost myself there for a second. I apologize. But when we started jamming again, when, when we decided to, to do this, I was like, why don't we add mute to it? Because I don't know why, but when I was listening to some of the other songs, just kind of reminding myself of the lyrics and stuff, I was listening to mute and I was like, man, that'd be a fun song to play. I love the groove of it and just that. So I'm digging mute and tear away is really cool, but it's, it's really cool for me for her different, you know, I know what Dave had in my, I've heard, you know, the guys have told me kind of Dave's perspective of that song and where it came from. And it, but I have a completely different one. Dave being such a friend, such a good friend. Um, for me being up there singing his song, you know, being being the singer of a band that he that he helped birth with the other three guys, um, the lyrics mean so much different. It means so so much. It means a lot. lot it's very different for me, but very powerful at the same time. You know, do I really want this? Sometimes I scare myself. I just can't let it go. Um, there's a, there's so many. Yeah. So tear away and mute. I think are probably the songs I'm I'm digging doing the most right now. That's right. I, that was a very wordy answer. No, but it, it was good <laughs> that you got you know your perspective on it and you know two killer songs, but also getting your perspective on singing those songs. It was unexpected for me. I wasn't sure what you were gonna say, so that was good. But uh, so I'm curious. So you guys have been obviously uh, touring with Saliva. Do you have a favorite Saliva song? I've I've always liked I. And there's a reason behind it. I always like Welcome to the Show. And I'm not sure that, I'm not positive that's the name of the song. Good, great song. I mean, it's a good song. It's a it, absolute, it, it's a hit because it's a good freaking song. Um, but for me, it's a memory thing because um, when I was a kid back home in Indiana, um, where I was born and raised, my dad used to watch like uh, sprint racing and midget racing and stuff, not the little people. Um, and the, I feel it was like Thursday night radio. It was some off the well, Tuesday, Friday. I don't know what it was, but the 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 song, the intro, whatever that was, was that was that song by Saliva. So I've got that in my head. Ten whatever, ten fifteen years ago, when the song came out. Yeah. Um, 
I still watched it. I'd catch it every once in a while if I had a second to sit still. And, uh, and that was the theme of it at that point in time. So gotcha. it's kind of that reminiscence of it being a subject matter that I shared with my dad and then their song being involved with it years later. No, that's really cool. Like the sentimental side of it, you know, the connection you have to your own life. That, that was cool. That was cool. So I do just got a few more things and we wrap the, wrapping this up because I know you have to get ready uh, tonight. I'm looking forward to tonight. So I'm curious. So you're also uh, the lead vocalist for Soil. Yes. Uh, will we ever see like a tour with Drowning Pool and Soil? No. No? We've toyed with ideas of how you could make it work. But the fact of the matter is, is my singing style is a lot of push, a lot of uh, basically yelling in key. Uh, there's a, um, so it's just being honest. Um, I, there's no way. There's no way I could give a night in and night out performance that would do both bands justice. And because I love the idea when we first started thinking about it, I was like, hell yeah, that'd be cool. But then it was like, you, you, there's no way with the singing style that I have, I'm a very limited, <laughs> I'm very limited in what I do. And it's, it's a lot of just power driven. There's no way I could do an hour something of, of soil and then do an hour something of drowning pool without the drowning pool set suffering because of it or vice versa. Whatever band played second in that situation, um, it would, th their set would suffer because of just the taxing that my voice would take to get to that point. So it wouldn't do the fan base justice because we wouldn't be able to deliver the songs the way that we would want to. No, I, I, uh, you know, I, no, I definitely understand with like the, the mechanics and logistics of all that, and you know, obviously the you know for your voice that you want to obviously make both fan bases, uh, you know, uh, leave it satisfied. So I, I completely understand that. I was just curious. Uh, that's why I asked. No, oh, no, it's something that we. It's a good question because it, it's something that comes up a lot on social media. Fans ask it a lot, and um, and it's something that we've talked about quite a bit, uh, and uh, but we just haven't came up with a solution that. It would work. No, no, I got you. I know. I saw that a lot when they announced that uh, when you rejoined Drowning Pool, people were like, "Oh, you guys are going to tour together." So I was just curious. Yeah, regretfully, regretfully, there's no strings or drum heads or anything like that to change when it comes to the throat. When when the throat gets starts getting tired, there's no uh, there's no quick fix. <laughs> yeah, you can't quick change anything in your no, vocal cords. No, no. <laughs> that would it'd be something, but yeah. not possible. <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh last thing and then we'll talk about the future plans for drowning pool so i i'm curious for you since i've seen you have a very extensive uh music career obviously with drowning pool and uh, uh and soil uh what have been like some of your favorite moments from your music career so far somebody and and i apologize to jump into this but i i was thinking about this the other day regardless of Thinking about it, and there are two, because there's way too many at the end of the day, because I've been blessed to have the length of career that I've had because people have taken the time out of their lives and given me the time of day to allow me to do it. Um, so I've, I've, when you think about the years and the amount of shows, um, there's been so many amazing moments, uh, funny, uh, wow moments. Um, but I think if I had to, if I had to pick two, um, it would be one would be having the opportunity to do like the the USO and MWR. Um, there's so many. I don't want to leave anybody out, so we'll stop right there. There's so many different uh, military associated uh, entertainment uh, based companies out there that bring entertainment to the troops around the world and being involved with them um, being able to do shows like in iraq a couple times um uh, germany so many different places around the world playing at military bases for these things taking a piece of home to to the troops that are overseas as well as playing the not you know i also enjoyed the military bases that we've done here stateside but but those moments where you get to take the music take a little piece of home to the troops that are overseas um those are unforgettable moments especially when you're talking about being in like a war zone and those men and women may not be in the metal. They may be in the country. They may be in the folk. They may be in the rap. You know, who knows? But at that moment, they're all really into whatever it is that they're watching because they're just not having to worry about being shot at or being shooting at somebody else. 
they're just they're they're in their in in their head they're just at home at a rock show and you see it in their eyes that's an amazing thing to be a part of um the the other thing would be and those things those shows were all so far all the military stuff i've done has been through with drowning pool and everything but uh another moment would be a, a solo related moment and it was the first time that i did a show in england and my dad who was such a big force in my life he raised me on the the british invasion music you know i the who and and led zeppelin and the rolling stones and and just on and on and on and on but uh so i i've always been very aware of just the history of music with with uh england and, and britain in general the uk in general uh so for me it wasn't so much the show which was awesome but it was landing it was flying into england that very first time and looking out the air, airplane window and seeing the lights of london it was nighttime and seeing the lights of london below it, i got like emotional because it was just like it was that moment of just how did this this flat billy because there's no hills in indiana as you know how this flat billy from indiana from a town of 3,000 people, how did I get here? You know, how did this happen? And just that surreal moment of just how lucky and wow. It's such, such, such a wow moment for me in my career. Those are two like, definitely incredible moments. Uh, I appreciate you sharing. I've heard uh, CJ said you guys are going to go back uh, overseas, I believe, uh, with Drowning Pool, or did you, did you already do that? Or is that coming up? Yeah, we got. I'm just not sure he's allowed to talk about it. <laughs> oh, okay, he said that in the last that's, interview. That's, <laughs> well, all right, I will stop there. Right with right. that. Yeah, yeah. If it's someone I'm thinking that you're talking about, yeah, I don't think we're allowed to talk about that. <laughs> okay, well, hey, we're gonna stop right there with that stuff. Right. But uh, last thing, and then obviously, I know you have to get ready, and I have uh, my things I have to take care of today. So, uh, last thing, what is like early 2024 looking like uh, for Drowning Pool? Will we hear some new music from you guys? definitely definitely hear some new music if not before 2024 then definitely early 2024 we have some really killer stuff lined up us getting back together caused kind of a stir and definitely some offers have come about that haven't we haven't seen the likes of in a while so um there's there's gonna be a lot of really cool announcements coming up in the in the next few months as we are allowed to announce them and um it's gonna be a very cool 2024 and definitely new music as soon as i got back with the guys it just cj and stevie just seemed all of a sudden get reinvigorated and the, the new music started flying and i've been wanting to write for years i've been missing writing so so we're just we're just going a thousand miles an hour on it right now having fun well i'm really happy for you guys i look forward to uh you know, obviously the more announcements and the more new music so Everyone just keep an eye on Drowning Pool. they got some killer stuff coming up. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. I had a great time chatting with you. I look forward to watching you rock out it, tonight. It was super cool, man. It hey, was super cool. Hey, that's what we go for here on Super Cool Radio. But Ryan, it's honored to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much. And as I said, oh, make you. sure to check out and uh, you know check out Drowning Pool for all the new announcements they will have coming up. I apparently know some stuff I'm not supposed to. So, <laughs> <laughs> so for Ryan McCombs of Drowning Pool, I'm your host, always Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for watching and listening to Super Cool Radio. And remember, stay frosty.